everybody and welcome back to the channel. It is a lovely afternoon. I have a very, very interesting topic that I'm going to dive right into. Of course, you know, um, I feel like all of these topics are interesting. This one is quite interesting though because um, something very major is happening. Family. Something very major. I don't know if you're paying attention, but if you're not, you're better. Something major is happening. Uh, this country is headed down a road that is not going to be favorable for a lot of people. I know I haven't been before you all um, too much in recent days. Busy on the farm. Look at those people right there. They're busy on the farm too. They don't look like you and I though. They are busy on the farm. Let me tell you all what's going on. You are being replaced for migrant S-L-A-V-E labor. U.S. companies are firing Americans and hiring immigrants. Now I have a whole lot whole lot of things I can say about this in different directions not just from one standpoint huh hmm um, I want my moderators to look out for ignorance in um, the chat I'm already starting to see some of that showing up ain't no feminism happening Feminism ain't got nothing to do with this, Dale. That's your ignorance talking, okay? So if you if you can't dish it, I mean, if you can't take it, don't dish it. What I'm talking about has absolutely nothing to do with feminism. That's the go-to statement for a lot of dudes, y'all. And guess what? I'm on my channel. I'm on my channel. So some people feel like I, I shouldn't even say things like that because uh, he's a man and you're a woman. Stay in your lane. Guess what? redirecting Proverbs 31 school of wisdom is my lane okay so again DEL this has nothing to do with feminism so I'm gonna get hmm, right into the topic I'll dive right in so right now I feel like um, America has a very very strategic thing very strategic thing that they are doing. Now, of course, like I said, I have more, more than one topic. Not topic, more than one position on this topic. Okay? I have more than one position on this topic. So, my first position is this. You have these companies uh, who claim to love America. They have created a comfortable way for them to um, slap you in the face, rip your job right out from under you, and hand it off to somebody who is not even a legal citizen. So before before I dive into this, I want you all to listen to uh, this uh, brief report. It's, it's telling you exactly what's going on. Huh? It's telling you exactly what's going on. Now, I mentioned to you all before that we know of an area where they just threw up a bunch of units for um, migrants. I mean, you can't even get there for, for citizens who've been here, you know. They ain't even throwing them up. Now, get this. These migrants get to stay there rent-free. So right now, this capitalist country is showing its head. They're basically saying bottom line, bottom dollar is all we care about. Not the citizens, not your feelings, not your families, not your desires. All we care about is the bottom line. All we care about is our profit margin, the growth of our company. That's it. You know, your family, forget about it. Anyway, let's take a listen at this report. Uh, those of you under the sound of my voice, take a listen at this 
and it's going to give you a rundown of what is happening and how people feel about it. Uh, there's actually one town in particular that was so happy about this one company coming in uh, to their town. That company is now shutting the whole thing down, getting rid of 1,200 jobs and opening up more than 50,000, the same company, 50,000 to migrants. How you like them apples? Anyway, take a listen at this, and of course you know I will be right back. Iowa is one of the great American suburbs. Quaint shops on the main boulevard, local produce sections at the grocery store, and pristine parks sprinkled throughout the town. It reached a golden era in the 60s and 70s when Tyson Foods opened up its pork factory and revolutionized the town's economy. It's a relatively small town with strong values and a very close-knit community. I just think it's a friendly community, and if you are willing to put out a little effort, I think everyone makes you feel welcome. Would you consider Perry a good place to grow? Definitely. Definitely. I am, I am really pro-Perry. I like the small town atmosphere. You get to know people. You walk down the street. They say hi to you. If uh, you need help, you know who you can turn to, that kind of thing. But Perry, Iowa is about to change drastically, and not for the better. This week, Tyson Foods announced that it will be permanently closing its pork factory in Perry, killing around 1,200 jobs in a town of just 8,000 people. So as Perry residents struggle to cope with mass layoffs, Tyson Foods has its eyes on a different class of workers. The company is now offering new jobs to asylum seekers in other states like New York. Bloomberg says Tyson's tracking migrants in a massive database. They scroll through the data like Facebook. You see a worker you like, tap hire. They even had a job fair. So you were at a Tyson fair in New York City not so long ago where Tyson was basically making this pitch. What did you observe when you went there? They created a database uh, for these new asylum seekers in New York City. So these people would come in, they'd learn a little bit about the company, and for the most part, Tyson had already gone through their various details of their application. And so many of them, uh, 17 the day I was there, and then uh, another 70 a couple weeks later, uh, went off to Tennessee to go start their uh, new jobs as uh, Tyson production uh, workers. Oh, and the jobs come with perks, not just health insurance. Tyson's also offering lawyers to its illegal alien workers and time off to attend immigration hearings in 2034 of course they're firing americans and offering perks to illegals this was the democrat plan all along well first of all let's just say we are a nation of immigrants 460,000 open jobs today wow i have 5,000 farm jobs that i need filled so we can plant the crops vegetables would rot in the ground if it weren't if they weren't being picked by many immigrants, many illegal immigrants. You see even in Florida, some of the farmers and the growers saying, why are you shipping these uh, immigrants uh, up north? We need them to pick the crops. We reached out to Tyson for comment and they said they have a very diverse set of employees and they're proud of it. Ohio Senator and author of Hillbilly Elegy, J.D. Vance joins us now. I didn't think it was legal, Senator, to ax American workers and hire en masse illegal aliens. Well, it shouldn't be, Jesse, and we're certainly going to look into whether we can change that, assuming Tyson is operating legally, which we don't even know if they are. We don't know the details of this. All we know, Jesse, is that they are firing American workers and hiring illegal aliens to replace them. This is the entire point of illegal immigration, and Republicans, we've got to hammer this point home. It reduces the wages of American workers by replacing American citizens with foreign laborers who are willing to work at slave wages. It has been the plan, as you said, from the beginning and what this means is the eradication of the American dream every time an American is replaced with an illegal immigrant it means that an American family loses a good family supporting wage it means that American companies are re literally replacing our own citizens with people who will work for slave wages that that is not capitalism or a market economy Jesse that is the decimation of the American middle class via illegal immigration and it's happening all over the country and this poor 
town's going to get slaughtered. All of those people laid off in such a small town, it's just going to be have a, such a tremendous impact. Are they getting around it legally by saying we're not hiring illegal aliens, we're hiring asylum seekers? Is that how they do it? Well, that's one of the ways that they do it, Jesse, and we know that the, the Biden administration has made it easier to basically pretend that economic migrants are asylum seekers. It's one of the reasons why we have to change our asylum laws in this nation. But, J Jesse, think about how much of a contrast this presents between the Trump economy and the Biden economy. If you go back to the Trump economy, you had American jobs going to American workers. You had wages rising. Under the Biden economy, you have those American workers getting fired and replaced with foreign labor. This is not an exaggeration. All net job creation, Jesse, you heard me right, 100% of net job creation under the Biden administration has gone to the foreign born. So we are taking an economy that produced prosperity for American citizens and turning it into an economy that produces prosperity for people who probably shouldn't be here in the first place. And I, I bet you know what Tyson isn't doing, Jesse. I bet they're not drug testing the illegal immigrants who are coming in. I bet they're not asking whether they're bringing fentanyl or drugs into that small town with them. Them. This is the end of the American dream if we let this stuff happen. We've got to reelect Donald Trump, and we've got to get congressional Republicans with some spine to push back against this stuff. Here, here. Thanks for speaking out about this, and thanks for all your work with East Palestine. We really appreciate it. Okay, everybody. So there are a few things to unpack here. A few things. Now, DJ said something uh, in the chat that was the other side of this remember i said in the beginning that there are two sides of this that i want to cover so i'm gonna i'm gonna cover that aspect of, of what dj said now first of all there were a couple of things he said actually um let me get back up to it okay so the first thing it goes without saying that the meats that they are saying are food anyway are junk right uh the food that they sell is not good for you said so that that's I want to get that part out of the way we realize that but see this company is not going to be the only company doing this It's going to be other companies as well that are going to readily get rid of American workers and hire migrants okay now the other thing that DJ said which is the other side of what I wanted to talk about was I don't see American citizens lining up for those types of jobs and so that's what I want to unpack. Um, there is a lot of truth to that. Now, before diving all of the way in to that part of it, I wanted to say, um, in that small town where you saw the clip, in that small town, they are closing the whole plant. All 1,200 workers are losing their jobs, but they are hiring some some say over 50,000 migrants and so this is all over right don't think that this is going to be the only company there are going to be other companies to follow suit as well now as far as the the term slave labor basically what we're trying to say with that uh, which is what the uh, one of the news hosts said was uh, they're going to be working for such low wages that it's almost like slavery. Such low wages. See, they can get away with that. But see, the only other thing that I see, look at all of the perks that they're getting. They're going to be getting a lot of perks. They're getting houses thrown up for them. You see how they're rolling out the red carpet saying, if you need to take time off of this or take time off of that, we got you covered. Things that they don't do for other folk. Hmm? So, the other thing that I want to talk about, you know, getting back into uh, the statement that DJ unpacked. I wanted to say this. I know of companies right now who can barely keep workers. So, we can't keep that part out of the conversation. There are companies right now who can't keep workers. You know why? Because there are some folk that are just straight lazy. Hmm. Did y'all hear what I said? See, sometimes here in America, the truth hurts people's ears. They don't want to hear it. Not talking about y'all in the chat here. I'm just saying some folk don't like the truth. They don't like to hear it. Now, I'm not saying that this is the case in every situation. 
right? Now, what I, I want to say this too, and I don't want to—I don't want to appear to be bouncing all over the place, but so many thoughts come to my mind. These companies, they're all about the money, right? You, they'll, these will be some of the same people on camera talking about get these migrants out of here, just leave my twelve hundred workers alone, <laughs> right? Get the migrants out of the country, but don't don't bother my fifty thousand as long as I can keep my company afloat. Do y'all see what I'm saying? Mm, mm, mm. As a matter of fact, it's so funny. Someone was talking about Donald Trump and all this stuff, how he's going to get all of the migrants out of here. Those same people don't even know or realize or even care that Donald Trump himself had some migrant workers. But see, we ain't going to talk about that, are we? Nobody wants to talk about that. See, you have companies doing stuff on the back end, but they want you to think that they're doing something else on the front end. Oh, I'm all about getting those migrants out of here. See, Joe Biden already made it clear that's his agenda. Joe Biden wants them in here. Hmm? He wants them here. He said it's going to make America great again. Ain't that something? <laughs> so I feel like these people are all working together. Hmm? Hmm? Uh, Spitter pointed out that uh, Donald Trump's ex-wife uh, made a statement, who else is going to clean our toilets? So these folk, they'll have them in working for them. But on the front side, they're pretending like they really don't want them here. As long as you can keep my company afloat. Now, that's one part of it. But back again to the fact that there are some Americans who don't want these jobs. My son works a job. He's been there for years. Thank you, Alexander, for the super chat. I appreciate it. And uh, he's been there for years, and he sees faces come and go, come and go. Young folk come up in there, and they, they pay in pretty good money, too. He sees young folk come up in there, stay a few days. Some of them bounce after one or two days. Some of them stay a week or two. Then they bounce. Oh, man, I'm tired of being up here. But now, listen, y'all. It is what it is. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. They work a few days, a few weeks, and then they bounce right out the door because in their minds, they feel like they have something better they want to do. They want to be in the streets. Huh? Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, Sister Otala, one or two days. And he even talks about some of these young folk, they be they complain. They don't want to do the job. They have doing it. So that's the other part of it that folk don't want to talk about. Now, that is not the case with every situation. Hmm? It's not the case with every situation. That's right, Raven. Americans are too spoiled. In this generation. Yep. Yeah, Brother Calvin, young people don't want to work. Let me tell y'all something. Whenever um, anyone sees our sons doing work or doing anything, right? Uh, they're building a cabin or and they're doing a great job on it. Someone actually stopped my husband and complimented him, said, um, how, are, how are you getting these? How, well, how old are they, right? Benjamin's about to be 17. Shem is 18, right? And so these people are just floored when they find out that these two young men built that cabin by themselves. They're like, how do you get a young man to do something like that? Because all they want to do is play video games. These young people today. Huh? It's really, really frightening what we're seeing, you all. We got to get in our young people's heads. We got to get in their heads and make them see, know, and understand that down the line, it just might get a lot harder. That there might not be somebody's couch you can lay on, somebody's basement you can move in when you decide you don't want to work your job no more. Hmm? I'm telling y'all. Thank you, Octave Miller. She said they go to the bathroom a million times a day, disappearing on the job. Come on now. Exactly. It is madness. 
A toddler says some of her students get offended when they're asked to work. Y'all see this? See, this is what's happening, y'all. This is what's happening. That's the other part that needs to be talked about, right? So when you see these migrant workers out here, I mean, before all of this stuff really took off, a few years back, we saw a farm not far from us, and we saw a bunch of migrants in the fields. Now, why is it that they are in the fields? Nobody else wants the job. Hmm? Apple uh, Pebble says uh, they have been on their job for 28 years. 28 years. That is a rare thing. That's rare. Now, uh, to Brother Todd, guess what? Of course, it's not all blacks, but guess what? My my son on his job is 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 other folks too, is white folk too, who can't handle their their jobs. When I say young people, I didn't say young black folk only. Is young people, period. Because a lot of the people that stop us, either it's my husband or myself, if depending on if we're together, um, wherever we are, folk are just trying to figure out how it is we have our young people working and they enjoy it and they can barely get their young people to cut the grass folk are not preparing their children for the future a lot of these parents when they close their eyes for the last time their children are going to be hopeless if you don't prepare them that's right brother David the fast food generation they don't want to do anything That's right, Brother Yasha. Brother Yasha said a lot of them fade faster than the black kids. One thing that I noticed, and I'm just keeping it real. I'm just keeping it real, y'all. I'm not trying to be funny. This is my observation. Huh? This is my observation. But I have seen uh, situations like at Lowe's or whatever, where you will have some of those other folk, they will lift one bag of dirt at a time or one bag of um, mulch at a time or whatever it is. And you will have the young black males who will lift two or three at a time. And I'm just giving y'all my observation. Yes, I am making the comparison because, you know, there's always this idea. There's always this idea that other folk are doing way better and way much more than so-called black folk. Hmm? Exactly. Anyway, I was looking at someone's um, ignorant comment in the chat there, but um, someone, thank you for getting rid of it. Um, we get ignorant folks show up all the time in the chat. Ignorant folks show up all of the time. All of the time. But anyway, I'm looking at these folk working in the field. That kind of work is difficult, but guess what? It's very, very necessary. Very necessary. It's the kind of work that's gonna put food on the table. Right? It's the kind of work that we do. Not just because, it's not just because we do it because we want to. We feel like it is necessity because more and more we are starting to see that this food that they are selling really isn't food and can't be trusted. A number of times I have had incidents with things that we ate from a store. One time we had a watermelon, I remember years ago, within seconds of biting into this watermelon, I broke out in hives. It didn't, it didn't wait 10 minutes. It didn't wait 20 or 30 minutes. It was right away. And I said, oh my God. I was, I was still a Christian at the time. But I remember how terrible it was. And I couldn't believe a watermelon did that to me. This lets you know something is going on. So we all need to get out there. 
We are not in the position to be turning down jobs because guess what? If they get a sense that you ain't going to work that job and that you're going to be calling in, guess what? They're going to call Julio to do the job for you or in place of you because Julio don't require as much. So we want to be, we want to make sure we realize and understand that these companies, they don't care about you and your family. Hmm? All they care about is the bottom line. I like what Yazara says. She says the, the incentives the migrant workers are getting aren't being offered to American workers. I just, let me see, hold on. I wonder would the migrant workers do the work without the incentives. Thank you, Yah Peace, for the super chat. I appreciate it. I believe they probably will. They, they probably would, in all honesty, because some of them, they're just happy to get the job. Hmm? They're just, they're just probably happy to get the job. And it, and it definitely does make it easier if somebody's paying their rent too, you know. And uh, a lot of times too, some of these farmers, they actually let the migrant workers stay on their land. Uh, there's a farm not far, not far from us. And um, they gather all of their uh, certain, certain uh, fruits and vegetables that come in through the year. They take them to various locations, various fruit stands uh, throughout the, the region. And do you think the, the person who owns that 5,000 acres is standing out there? I don't know how many acres they have. All I know is they got a lot of land. No, they send Julio out there. Julio goes and stands at those fruit stands all day selling those um, fruits and vegetables for them. They even got Julio some, some business cards. Ask me how I know. Because we, <laughs> there are certain things that uh, we may not have that we will go and buy from Julio. And he says, oh, our farm is right over here. We work for um, Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so. Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so don't get out there, y'all. Huh? They don't get out there. They send Julio. And uh, what's a female name? Uh... Julio and Sylvia, maybe? Anyway. That's right, Julio loves his job. <laughs> Gloria? Yeah, Maria. Yes, Julio and Maria. They send them out there. <laughs> yeah, they send them out there for real. I mean, it is what it is, y'all. It is what it is. Is what it is. So anyway, y'all, I just wanted... Rosa, thank you, Rosa. There's another one. Esmeralda, Chico. <laughs> yeah, Paco. That's right. They send them out there and uh, they're doing the work. Now, I did see a few of you say in the chat that you wouldn't want those jobs. And I certainly understand. You know, it is tough. It's tough. We work on a farm. Excuse me. We live on a farm. It is tough work. But we feel like we have to. Hmm? We feel like we have to. It's not that we can't go to the store. We just, we're getting to the point where we're like, um, we got to be very careful what we are putting in our stomachs. Uh, Dizane, uh, no, I didn't, but um, thank you. Did you see my thank you coming? No, I didn't, but... Um, um, I see it now, and so whatever it was, thank you, beloved. <laughs> I had no intentions of being before you too long on this. It's just um, it's it's getting to the point where we got we're gonna have to start doing some other things, family, because these companies are going to start laying folk off. And picking up somebody else. Um, Maria and Julio and Paco, all of them are going to get the jobs. Yeah, they are getting the jobs. Not going to get, they are getting. They building them new structures, giving them 
monthly allowances. They're doing all kinds of things for them. And don't none of y'all be fooled by this Democrat-Republican thing and all of this other stuff. Like I said, these people are letting in who they need to keep their companies. Hmm? They're letting in who they want to keep their companies afloat. It trips me out how we got all this stuff talking about migrants. You got a whole group of people who, who say they don't want the migrants in here. But let this group of people need about 50 or 60 workers themselves to run their company to do the stuff they don't want to do. Do you think they're going to say, no, we only hire Americans? That's the hypocrisy of, of, of these folk in this country. They talk all of that stuff on camera, right? But behind the scenes, just like Mr. Trump had a bunch of migrants working for him. Hmm? My biggest issue with the migrants, my biggest issue is the fact that there are things that they this country could have been doing for our people for a long time to, to make our situations better collectively instead of casting stumbling blocks. See, that what they're doing is building bridges for them while casting stumbling blocks for our people in which they've been doing that for a long time, right? Building bridges for other folk, but doing what for us? Huh? Digging ditches. Casting stumbling blocks. Hmm? That's what they've been doing. So, of course, you're going to see the black community crime written. If you take away the jobs, you dismantle the families. Don't sit back and pretend like you don't know what the heck's going on. You know exactly what's going on because it was your plan from Jump Street. And you know it was. Hmm? Um, I want to say something to you, Lisa, in the chat. Um, Lisa, I've noticed uh, you've shown up in the chat several times. Okay? several times and you always make it your business to let everyone know that your husband is white that's not necessary beloved we are we we know that now okay i'm not picking on you i'm just saying that's not necessary we already know it because you've already said it several times okay so that being said that being said family the tide is changing. Folk are not being fair to us. They know they're not. They know they have cast stumbling blocks. They know that they are opening up, opening up doors for them that they haven't opened for us. How can I help you, young man? Sorry. <laughs> I thought Daddy had called. Me. Oh, you go through that door. I'm broadcasting. <laughs> oh my goodness. These kids, they just be busting through my door. They just be busting through, not even knocking. You can't just bust through my door, young man, like that. I'm telling on you, Benjamin. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> He's like, sorry, Daddy called me. Daddy's on the other side of the building. You got to go through the other door. All right. All right. So, um... <laughs> I got thrown all the way off, y'all. <laughs> oh, I got thrown all the way off. I'm pretty much done with this, y'all. Yeah, that's right, Brother Yashin. They do. They do. And, and I love them as well. <laughs> but like I've told y'all many times, that sign on the door um, recording, I, I, it has... um. Um, recording in progress or something like that it's just a, it's just a decoration at this point nobody even pays attention to it at all now I'm looking at what G GP says in the chat these migrants is going crazy so that's the other part of it hmm that's the other part of it listen y'all some of these people are a trip 
Some of them are a trip. Now, some of them don't even like us. I'm going to just, hey, I'm, I'm calling that part out too. I'm not surprised. They've been trained very well. Hmm? They've been trained very well. But get this, y'all. Some of them, they just, they don't like us. They, they, if you ask them why, they, they can't even tell you. Thank you, contend, contending for the faith. Faith, I appreciate the super chat. They, they, they can't even tell you. You say, um, why are you looking at me like that? Why won't you speak? Or why, why are you acting like this? Huh? Why? I don't know. Of course you don't know. Deep down inside you do. Somebody done told you some things, got in your ear and said some things. And the other part of it, I believe, is this. I think they know that some of our blood runs through their veins, but they don't want to admit it. Now, Hugo Chavez, remember him? Uh, he was the president down in, um, was it, um, I, can't, I can't remember, somewhere down in South America. I can't remember exactly. But he actually admitted on camera, he says that they are the creation of a third race. He says they are a mixture of African and European. He said it. Hugo Chavez actually said it. Now, some of them, they they don't they wish they could just rip the black blood out of them. Y'all hear what I'm saying? They they wish they could just get it all out. I, I bet they wish they can get a some type of vial and just have it just come on out of them. Hmm? You'd be surprised what go through some folks' mind. That's how much they cannot stand so-called black folk. But when it's all said and done, and it's time for the marriage supper of the Lamb, it's going to be a lot of folk trying to cash in that card. Y'all know what I mean, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of folk gonna be trying to cash in. Like, I got some of that in me. I got a little black in me. No. You didn't want it there, though, remember? We remember. You thought. You thought that that was the bad side of things. Hmm? That's what you thought. Anyway, y'all, I'm done with this, done with this topic. Thank you all for your time. I really didn't intend to spend this much time on this topic, but I definitely thank you all uh, for your time. Um, those of you who are going to watch this on the replay, you can leave your comments. Remember to keep it tight and keep it right as always. Uh, thanks for those who uh, gave the super chat, those of you who are moderators and uh, all of that good stuff. Uh, the factor... Uh, we don't, I don't do Trump over here. I don't do Biden over here. I don't do that at all. So if that's who you want to vote for, um, whoever wins, that's who the most high wants there. But I just want you to know I'm not for either one of them because I, I don't feel like no president has ever had so-called black people's best interest at heart. They talk a good game. Yes, they do. They talk a good game. That's all it is. Hmm. That's all it is. It's a good game. But I can't name one president that I could say genuinely cared anything about so-called black folk. Now, you can trick your own mind and say something and say, well, this one did. I, I hear a lot of folk sitting back saying that Donald Trump um, really cares about black people. I'm saying that person is delusional. Ain't no point in even trying to argue with that person because if you think that man care anything about you knee grow you need to grow up if you think um, joe biden care anything about you knee grow you are sadly mistaken and i, I kind of sort of but i don't feel sorry for our people when they get stuck in that mode I just don't believe they care anything about us. Whether you live or die, it doesn't matter to them. That's right. I said it. The truth is what it is, whether you like it or not. Thank you for your time. Until the next live or the next video, family, stay prayed up.
We hope you liked today's topic. Please leave your comments below. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, share and like this video, and with that, we're out. Be sure to ring the bell to be notified of new uploads on this channel, and also comment, share, like, and subscribe.